All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another wireless networking video. This one is going to be number four. We're going to talk about the access method. Actually, we're going to start talking about the access method. Today, it's going to be the contention and contention-free periods. Now, you know how sometimes your wireless network just isn't quite what you were wishing it to be? Well, after today's video, you'll understand a little bit about why that might be. In fact, after we finish this series, you're going to wonder why wireless networks work at all. Now before we get started, remember Ethernet and its access method? Well that was the CSMA CD method or carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Now this dates all the way back to the the beginning days of, of Ethernet. We don't really worry about this too much today on switched networks so this dates from a time when Ethernet was shared. You know, repeaters, hubs, all of that good stuff. Well, Carrier Sense Multiple Access starts off with you listening to the network because everybody can hear what everybody else is doing. So you had to wait your turn. So if the media was free, you could transmit. If it wasn't free, you had to wait. And if you started to transmit and you collided with somebody else, by the way, you had to be able to listen and transmit at the same time. That's what one pair was for and then you had a receive pair. Well, if you collided because you detected a collision on your receive pairs, well, you had to back off and wait and then try again later. Now, it's a shared media and that sort of access method is very contentious, right? It's a big fight. Everybody's trying to say something. Everybody's got data to transmit, but you got to fight it out. You got to try to win access to the media. Well, guess what? Wireless is even worse than that. Now, two big abbreviations that we have in the wireless world are PCF and DCF. Now, they stand for the point coordination function and the distributed coordination function. Let's start with the point coordination function. Now technically this is an optional part according to the standard because access points are optional. But because we use access points all the time, it's not really optional. So the point coordinated function is the time period where the access point has got control over the media. Now you remember that the access point is kind of important. It takes care of our transmissions to and from the wired network, but it also issues the beacon. Well, when does it issue the beacon? During the point coordination function or during a time period that is co coordinated by or controlled by the access point. Now the access point also keeps track of the nodes that are going into power saving and when those nodes are in power saving, well, you got to buffer their frames. So the access point needs time to get those frames to those destination nodes. It also has to have time to pull individual nodes so the point coordination function is sort of a time when the access point says, everybody out of the pool, I've got stuff to do. Now, you might ask yourself quite properly, how does the access point get control over the media? Well, wireless networks are controlled by timing. And there is something called the interframe space. Actually, there's a bunch of them. We'll cover them here in a second. The access point uses a point interframe space, which is a shorter than some of the other interframe spaces that are out there. And so because of, of the shorter interframe space, the access point doesn't have to wait as long, and so it can get its stuff done. Ah, you will say, what about the wireless nodes? I'm glad you asked. Well, the distributed coordination function, or DCF, is about the nodes. So the access point gets its work done and now we're going to enter what we call the contention period. When the access point's in control, that's the contention free period because nobody else is allowed to get access to the media. The minute nodes want access to the, uh, the media, we're gonna use the distributed coordination function. Now, this is where we actually get into the node side of the access method. And for this, we're gonna use carrier sense multiple access that part is the same as Ethernet. Listen, if it's free, go ahead and transmit. But we're going to do something called collision avoidance. Now we're going to talk a lot more about how nodes get their data done in a later video. But for right now, we have to realize that in a wireless network, we cannot detect collisions. Why? Because we can't listen and transmit at the same time. That would require extra radios. 
And so, because we don't do collision detection, we have to do something called collision avoidance. Okay. Once you start transmitting as a node, you have a limited amount of time to get things done. In Ethernet, we deliver a frame, and then you have to wait for the inner frame gap. In wireless, you have an MPDU, a data unit that comes down from the upper layers of the stack, and you're going to transmit that. Well, sometimes you've got to break up that data unit into parts, and so that's a fragmentation part that we have in wireless. Don't confuse it with the IPv4 fragmentation or IPv6 fragmentation. We'll cover more of that in a later video. We also have duration and network allocation vector, which describes how long you have to transmit. So wireless nodes have a particular amount of time to transmit a certain amount of data or a particular kind of frame. And then they have to give up the, the media. Now here's an important idea. The PCF and DCF, these two contention-free and contention time periods, alternate back and forth to allow the access point to get its stuff done and allow the nodes to send their data. Well, here's a couple of more details we need to really understand what's going on. I've mentioned a couple of times in these videos the inner frame space. Well, there are actually four of them. Now, another way to think about inner frame space is a wait time, right? If I send out a frame, I can't just send another one right after it. I have to wait. That time period that I have to wait, or bit intervals that I have to wait, is called the inner frame gap or the inner frame space. In wireless networks, we have four of them. Ethernet only has one. The point interframe space, or PIFs, is the one that's used by access points when they're doing their thing, right? Doing the beacon, handling uh, the communication to and from the nodes, things of that sort. It's also used by a node that says, okay, it is time to start the distributed coordination function, or the contention period. Nodes that are waiting to send data in the contention period, in the distributed coordinated function, will use the distributed inner frame space, or the diffs. Now there's another one, there's a little tiny one called the short inner frame space, and that is used a couple of different places. One is when a node generates a data frame on a wireless network, the receiving node has to acknowledge that because we have no idea if the destination node got this layer 2 frame. And so the destination node sends an acknowledgement frame back. Those two frames are separated by the SIFs. Now we also have a couple of other situations, CTS, poll responses, getting ready to send uh, a fragment, you know, the, the next fragment in a sequence, those are also separated by a SIFS. The last one is the extended inner frame space. It's the longest of the inner frame spaces, and that is used to help us clear out problem frames. For example, if we have a frame that has a bad CRC and we want to get it off the network, we don't want anybody to answer this, and so we wait for the extended inner frame space and then throw that out of there. So the thing to remember here is that the EFs is the biggest, and then we got the diffs, the PIFs, and then the SIFs. But they're all used for different purposes, and it's critical that we not only obey the rules, but we keep track of timing within the cell. Okay, wait. So what did we just say? What, what is all this stuff that we're talking about? So remember that in a wireless network, everybody's got something to say. Just like any other data network, all the nodes have data that they want to send or receive. But the access point is a critical part of an infrastructure-based network. So the access point has a lot of stuff that it has to handle. And so we've got stuff coming from the wired network, we've got that beacon frame, we've got the nodes that went to sleep, and so the access point has to have a chance to get rid of all that stuff or take care of all those jobs. That's what the point-coordinated function, or the contention-free time period is for. And then we transition into the distributed coordinated function, right? Distributed, everybody's doing it. But this is also the contention-based time period, where all the nodes are vying for the network. And this is one of the problems with a wireless network. Now, we can't do anything about it. We love wireless networks. They're fabulous. They're getting better all the time. But one of the problems in the wireless network is that we get a flop back and forth between the PCF and the DCF. Another problem is that every single doggone data frame has to be acknowledged. And when you're in the DCF, the contention-free period, everybody's fighting with everybody else 
to try to transmit data. And this is why the greater the number of nodes that you have on an access point, the worse your performance is going to get because they're all sharing the bandwidth. Now in a wireless network, timing is strictly controlled. All those interframe spaces, durations, network allocation vectors, and just for fun I put in a graphic from the standard itself that sort of shows some of the details regarding operation. Now we're going to go through this next time I think because we're going to talk about how nodes actually send data. And the last thing to remember is that you can't detect collisions on a network. Collisions on a wireless network just sound like interference as compared to a wired network we've, where we've got the additional uh, receive pair. So, why does your wireless network stink sometimes? Well, if you're experiencing problems on the network, we now know that if you've got an access point and you've got wireless nodes, they're, they're going back and forth between what they have to do. We also know, and I, got, I can't emphasize this enough, right? It's a shared media. Everybody can hear everybody else. That's why everybody's talking to you about security at Starbucks or something like that. Because if you can uh, transmit wireless data, somebody else can listen to what you're doing. So encrypt your data, secure your network. Another problem, and that is uh, extraordinarily high amount of overhead, is that every single data frame has to be acknowledged. That's like me saying, hi there, and you say, ack, and I say, how are you, and you say, ack, and then you say, fine, and I say, ack, and you say, pretty good, uh, you know, how are you, and so, uh, and then I would say, ack again, so it, it, every single data frame has to be acknowledged, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, a little bit like TCP in that way, so we've got a lot of reasons that we have uh, performance hits in a wireless network, and we do a lot to try to make sure that we mitigate some of those effects. And we'll talk about how to set up a wireless network and some performance topics later on. Well, awesome. In this video, we talked about the wireless access method, carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. Now, we didn't get to the data transmission part. We're going to do that in the next video. But this time, we focused on the difference between PCF and DCF and then interframe spaces and what all of that's about. Remembering that we've got a shared media and that we've got an access point that has an awful lot of work to do. So next up, we're going to talk about how data transmission actually occurs on a wireless node. So ready your RTS, CTS, your AX, and your distributed interframe space. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I helped, and may those wireless packets always reach their destinations no matter how much contention you have to do.